All right, so here are 4.4 notes. We're just going to do more problems with those same theorems we learned in the previous um, notes. So find the values of x and y in the diagram. Well, I see a couple different triangles here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first highlight one of the triangles because it's going to be easier to focus on one first. So KJL, we're going to look at that triangle. And if we see, you see these tick marks here. So that means if all angles are congruent, then all sides are congruent. So that means X is going to equal 8 because all these sides are going to be the same. Now, if I look at, let's get a different color here, MJL, that triangle, and I see these tick marks. So that means if two angles are congruent, then two sides are congruent. Well, this one already has a tick mark. So I can put the tick mark there as well. Well, that means that those two are the same. Well, I just found out that x was 8. So I can say that 2y is also 8. So y is going to be 4. So this one was looks a lot more complicated than it is. It was just if ang two angles are congruent, then uh, if three angles, then three sides. If two angles, then two sides. So we just had to kind of figure out which triangles we were looking at. All right, find the values of x and y. So this one is one of the trickier ones that we'll see. So I see two sides are congruent. So that means two angles are congruent. And the two angles are those two. Well, if you see the one has an x, one has a y. So I can't put them in the same equation because that doesn't help us. I can't say x equals y. I can't solve for any of them. But I do have a 22. So if I have 180 is what they all add up to, and I subtract 22, I get 148. Well. If I know that these two add up to 148, oh, sorry, 58. So now I am going to, if each one of those equal, or if they both add up to 158, now I take 158 and I'm going to divide by 2 to get what each one of those equals. So now I know that 8x minus 1 equals 79, and I also know that 6y plus 1 equals 79. So let me explain that again. So I have all three angles add up to 180. That's where I got that from. If I'm going to get rid of this angle, so get rid of the 22, I need to subtract 22 to get 158. Well, now I know that both of these equal 158. Well, if they're the same, I can just divide by 2. So now I know what each one of those pieces equal. And now I can just solve each equation. So I added 1, divided by 8, subtract 1, so that would be 13 I believe, and there we go. That's going to be one of the more challenging ones we come across. Here's another one that's similar. So I need to find this right here, this angle. I know two angles. Well, our triangle sum theorem says that they all add up to 180. So if I subtract those two, That means, oh, sorry, 
180 minus 102 minus 39. Oh. I get 39. So this one is also 39 degrees. Well, that means that our two angles are the same. And if two angles are the same, then two sides are the same. So I know that these two are going to be the same. So now if those are my tick marks, I can put 2x plus 7 plus 5x minus 8. And now I solve. X is going to be oh, 5. So X is 5. But now it asks you to find the perimeter of the triangle. So we got to make sure we remember what they're, they're asking us for. So now I need to plug it back in. Well, 6 times 5 is 30. 2 times 5 is 10, plus 7 is 17. 5 times 5 is 25, minus 8 is also 17, which we should have known because of the tick marks. And your perimeter means everything added up on the outside. 30 plus 17 plus 17. 30 plus 10 plus 10, 40, 50, and then I have another 14, so that's 64. So my perimeter is 64 units. Okay? So those are some harder ones that we will come across and we will see. So why don't you try these two? making sure that you know how to set them up and solve. They're going to be very similar. Um, so why don't you pause it and see what you get for the perimeter. Um, and show your teacher for that one to make sure that you did that one correctly. For this one, I have two sides are congruent, so that means my two angles are congruent. So that means 6y minus 5 equals 10y minus 41. Oh. So if I have that equation, I'm going to subtract. So I get y is 9 just by doing my solving when these two are the same. Well, now I need to find this angle. Well, in order to do that, I need to plug this back in. So 10 times 9 is 90. 90 minus 41 is going to be 49 degrees. Well, this should also be 49, but we can just check it. 6 times 9 is 54. Minus 5 is 49. Well, now if I know all two of the three angles, I can add them up to 180. So 49 plus 49 plus 12x plus 22 equals 180. So don't forget all angles add up to 180. So 49 plus 49 plus 22 is all my like terms. So I get 60 divided by 12 is going to be 5. So those are my finding my x and my y. 
Use the picture for both proofs. Um, there's only one proof, so just kidding. So I am given that AB and AE. So this is a good reminder of how to write a proof. So I'm going to start with my given always. Now what I want to get to is I want B and E to be congruent. Well, I have two sides are congruent. So if I have two sides congruent, then two angles. Well, my two angles are going to be B and E. It's the easiest two-step proof you've done, hopefully. So that one's pretty easy. So this one is going to be similar. ACD is this angle. ADC is this angle. Angle ACD. So there's my given. And remember, it says ACD is isosceles, so ACD. So that is my triangle. I want to prove that is isosceles. Remember, isosceles means it has two congruent sides. Well, if two angles are congruent, then two sides are congruent. So if two sides are congruent, I can say that AC is congruent to AD. Well now, if two sides are congruent, then isosceles by the definition. So I can say that triangle ACD is isosceles. So these two proofs weren't very hard. We had to make sure we remember our if-then statements. This one, number three, is kind of the same. You could say definition of isosceles if you wanted to. Um, they're going to be the same thing. So remember to show your teacher your answer for this one, and then you'll get your worksheet.